Hello, you're here with Smooth Radio and joining us in the studio today is the wonderful Belinda Carlisle. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Welcome back to London. Thank you. What have you been up to since you've been here? Oh, God. Well, I've been, you know, doing festivals on weekends and in between going to exhibitions and plays and concerts and all sorts of things like that. Have you got more to explore while you're here? Are there things on your to-do list? Um, I have a couple more I have a couple more festivals this weekend. I have one next weekend. I'm going to go see the Dior nice. uh, exhibition at the V&A. I'm going to get, get a audible. I, I'm booked to have a tour of uh, Westminster Abbey on Monday. So whenever we're in London, we take advantage of all that stuff because there's always something great going on. I know. And what I found is that everywhere's so close. It looks miles away on a map, but actually it's everything's in walking distance. I know. And if you get in a car, it actually takes much longer it than does, walking. It does. It really does. <laughs> now, obviously, we're here at Smooth Radio. So mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you what it's like to still hear your songs being played on the radio after all these years. I, I turn them up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel so, I mean, it's surreal almost to me. And, you know, walking into shops, which haps, happens quite a bit when the song comes on and or on the radio. Um, still gives yeah, you that buzz. Yeah, it's like, hey, everybody, it's me. No, but, yeah, no, it gives me a buzz still. And, I, I, and if I'm in the car, I just turn it up. Because it, it, it is, it's bizarre. It's, a, it's, a, it's still a weird feeling. Yeah, it's like Belinda's own party. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, your songs can always be heard on adverts and in films. Do you find that strange or are you kind of used to that now? Um, I'm kind of, well, it's weird because usually, because I'm not, you know, normally I'm not the, well, the primary writer. So it's not up to me whether something gets um, used or not. I mean, sometimes I'll ask my permission, like they asked recently to use Heaven for Handmaid's Tale, and I said, absolutely. Yeah. And um, I know that Heaven was used for Black Mirror, and uh, that actually was a really an amazing thing. I didn't know about it, but and all of a sudden everybody was telling me, did you, did you see that episode? It's really unbelievable. And then it won all sorts of awards and Emmys, and it was weird watching the Emmys and seeing and hearing Heaven as a place on earth being played by the, the orchestra. Absolutely. Your social media must go crazy. Yeah, it was. Happens. Actually, it brought a whole new slew of fans uh, because of that song. And obviously, earlier this year, many of your fans were surprised to hear Vacation at the end of the new Spider-Man film. Yes, I was too. That was quite a nice treat. I didn't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, see, like that, like that. I, I wasn't one of the writers. But in some, most of the time, I'm really happy about it. In fact, everybody, uh, all the other writers, like the girls in the band, we all had the same kind of... Um, opinions on things and things that we will do and won't do. Like we yeah. won't do meat, we won't do um, um, alcohol because some of us don't don't drink. There's like certain sort of ethics we have. But um, I can't think of any time that it was used, um, except but yeah, I think I can one time actually. You must be sitting watching films sometimes going, oh, I didn't know my... my yeah, no, that happens a lot actually. It happens a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know, and I and I because usually no one asks me, if, and and sometimes I'll be really cheeky, and and if 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 the production is cheap, then they'll get somebody that sounds like me to redo the vocal, so they don't have to pay. <laughs> it's not on, is it? <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> now, can you believe it's been thirty-eight years since the release of Gogo's Beauty and the Beat, and thirty-three years since your first debut solo album? Uh no. It's amazing. I can't believe, yeah, it's it's. Uh, it does. It's. It seems like ages ago, and at the same time, it seems like yesterday. But um, yeah, a lot has happened in the past forty years, <laughs> forty-three years. Yeah. Now, obviously, we're in London as well, mm -hmm. and you've been in musicals in the West End, most notably Hairspray. Gloria Estefan has just done her own show about her life story on your feet. Would you ever be keen to do something about the Belinda Carlisle story? Actually, there's there's a big interest in my book now um, because of all these movies like on, on the, based on Queen and Elton John. So it seems to be kind of a fashionable thing to do right now, that genre. So there's, there's like five different um, uh, companies, big companies interested in the book. But at the end of the day, um, I'm going to be able to have, you know, I don't want it to be sh like, well, with all due respect, like the Motley Crue movie, <laughs> so, you know, I want to, you know, want to have a little bit of a hand in it. So I'd rather ha not have it done than have it done. Yeah. If it's not going to be the way that I want it. And what do you think you would have done if had the go-go's not worked out? 
Was there another career path that you I would have I probably would have been in design somehow and either um, probably interior design because I've always loved it and I've always had a, a knack for it. So either that or something, something in the arts, I'd say. And with the Go-Go's, you've toured so many times and you've regrouped and there's still so much demand for it. Would you ever yes. love to go on another tour? Well, there's a documentary that's coming out um, oh, wow. early next year. It's been... Uh, it's been in the process for the past year and a half, directed by Alison Elwood, who directed the Eagles documentary and lots of, like, she's a world-class director. So they've interviewed everybody who's ever been involved in the Go-Go's and the Go-Go's and individually and collectively. No stone unturned. And it's going to be, it'll be interesting. And I know that there's, because... Well, we, we played with the Philharmonic for three nights at Hollywood Bowl last year. And because we don't go out that often, there's the demand is... It's always a big demand for the band in the, in the States. So, I don't know. I mean, we're doing a big July 4th thing. I should just say it right, get it out right now. July 4th thing in, in uh, Washington, D.C. Wow. It's, it's So, you know, with, that, with the documentary coming out, I'm sure we'll do a little bit of work. Now, I read recently that you're actually more interested in jazz after inspiration from Miles Davis. Yes, I just discovered Miles Davis. I mean, I always knew about him, but I didn't really have an appreciation of him. I don't know anything about jazz. Honestly, I don't. I know of some artists, but I don't know. I never really understood it. And I think it's one of those things you understand when you get older. And now, I mean, I play it every morning. I play, play, play Miles Davis every morning. Yeah, I think jazz is definitely open to interpretation as well. So what I was going to ask was, Lady Gaga has obviously teamed up and went from the pop world to the jazz world with Tony Bennett. Mm -hmm. Would you ever be keen on doing a jazz album? I d would love to, but I don't think my voice is suited for it. It's a, it's a lot harder to, to sing than you would think. Yeah. You know, it seems like it'd be an easy thing. And I, I've kind of played with the, the idea and have demoed songs before, and it just d sounds wrong. <laughs> And I, it's not, it's, it's just a style that it's really different. It's really difficult. Maybe I haven't found the right song, but I would love to be able to sing Cole Porter or Sammy Khan or, Absolutely. or, but I just don't think I'm suited for it. Well, that's fine. You can still sing around the house and enjoy oh, yourself. Oh yeah, I can sing to myself. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Now we're here at Smooth Radio to celebrate the 30th anniversary of your Runaway Horses album. For this anniversary, you're releasing a super deluxe box set, a compilation gold three CD set, a two LP gold vinyl release <laughs> plus a live UK concert tour. So not too much then. No, not too much, no. <laughs> you like to keep yourself busy. I like time off too, but <laughs> but um, I love to sing. That's, that's what it all comes down to is I just love to sing and I love doing what I do and I've been doing it for so long and, you know, I never th would have thought I'd be doing this right now still at my age and... and um, yeah, I mean, I'm really lucky to have worked with some of the world's greatest songwriters. Absolutely, yeah. And um, have I'm lucky to have a unique voice. I may not be the best voice, but it's unique. And it's it's fun. It's fun when I get into work mode, it's fun. But I like having time off too, like I said. And uh, do you love your whole repertoire or is there one song that you're like, okay, I, I'd quite happily not perform that one again? Um, most of the songs... Um, I don't mind singing, even though I might get tired of them. Like I'm like I might get tired of singing "Heaven," for instance. But when you see the joy that it brings to people and people that love it and they go crazy, it it makes you love the song all over again. So, um, and and there's also songs that I hated listening to, like for instance on "Runaway Horses," "Deep Ocean." Like I think it's horrible. But, um, except for George Harrison's guitar solo. Yeah. But then when we did it live for the, we did a 30th anniversary tour of Runaway Horses in Australia at the beginning of the year, and it's a great song live. So there's been songs that have been surprisingly good that I was like, oh my God, I have to sing that song. And then we did it, and it was like, this is really, really good. You know, so there's songs that have been surprises like that. So, but most of the songs, if I don't want to sing it, I won't sing it. Yeah, and there must be some that surprise you that you think, that probably won't go down that well, but when you perform it live, the crowd are just going wild for it. Yeah, like Fool for Love off the Heaven on Earth album. That's, that's a, um, a deep cut, as I say, but when we do it live, it's a great song live and people love it. Now, you've recorded so much over the years, but just last month it was reported that some of your material was involved in this 2008 Universal fire. Yeah. When did you find out about that and do you know what's been lost? 
We don't know what's been it's lost yet. Yeah, no, it's been, it's horrible, 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 horrible. And what's really horrible is um, probably, most likely, well, it, probably all my multi-tracks are, were, were destroyed. Um, but a lot, a lot of my stuff, they're, it's, they're in vaults all over the world. So I probably have a lot of backup stuff here, but I don't have multi-tracks here. Yeah. But um, I think th that was bad and, and it was like even... I think horrible that Universal didn't alert any of the artists and they collected on the insurance. Right. So, so did you find out through the press the same way? Yeah, the same did? way. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It was um, just the way that they treated they treated such, I mean, invaluable material. I mean, mine is like, you know, it, it's, 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 it's of a genre, but when you think back about Billie Holiday and... And Louis Armstrong and and Frank Sinatra. Yeah, I mean it's disgusting. It's disgusting that they didn't that they didn't tell any of the artists, and they collected on the insurance. And then their attitude is, well, we didn't need to 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 alert any of the artists because we own it. The artist doesn't. That's their attitude. Yeah, and I mean the list does go on and on. Oh, Dolly it's Parton. horrible. It's it it's so horrible and and so sad, and their behavior is abominable. Honestly. But in other good news, mm -hmm. you're going back on tour this September, <laughs> playing live. The whole album of, of Runaway Horses, um, which, like I said, I mean, there were a couple songs on there that I, uh, Deep Ocean being one of them, that I wasn't like, I thought, oh, God, you know, I really don't want to do that. But when we did it, it sounded amazing. And actually the whole... You know, that's what makes a good... If you can break down a, a pop song and, and, and just acoustic guitar and, and, and it's good, then you know it's a really well-crafted song and it's a good song. So um, we reworked some of the tracks um, and they sound amazing. And uh, that's what people want to hear. They want to hear every single track off that album. Not really in any sort of order, but you have to do it all. They don't mind. That's I know, not, I don't think that people mind. We, we did it with um, the Heaven, Heaven on Earth 30th anniversary and uh, mixed a, a, some of the other material from the other albums too, but it was more focused on Heaven and uh, it went down really well. So the Belinda Carlisle live tour starts on the 18th of September and you're going to be embarking on a 14-day solo tour. You're going to be all over Manchester, London, Dublin. Mm -hmm. You're going to be busy. Yeah, it's it, but at the same time it's short and sweet, just like I like it. Yeah, it's it's uh, um, hitting all. You know, I, I wish I could go longer, but I don't like you know long tours these days. So it's two three weeks is my maximum, and uh, I'm really really excited about it. What are you looking forward to most? I mean, you've toured so many times. Are you preparing for this tour differently? No, not really. And and I I'm I did all my preparation earlier in the year so I don't feel like under a whole lot of pressure um, I was a bit nervous when I was in Australia doing this because I had never I'd never performed some of those songs live before yeah ever so I was like oh how is this gonna go but it went down really well so I'm pretty confident that uh, people will enjoy it and you're gonna be back here at the London Palladium yes same stage that Judy Garland was on <laughs> Yeah, I know the list goes, know, goes on know, and on. I know it's on and on. Yeah, I'm really really excited about that venue. I, I bet I, I went to the I've been to that venue a few times, but it's been years and years. So, it'll be great as uh, you know being on that stage. Well, we're looking forward to the tour and we're looking forward to the release. Thank you so much for joining us Thank here you. at Smooth Radio. Thank you. And for more exclusive interviews just like this, visit smoothradio.com. Thank you so much, Belinda. Thank you.